It's important to communicate with the dead in ways that they understand. That's why I use a lot of Christian prayers when I'm working with Christian graves. I wouldn't use Christian prayers or Christian symbols if I wasn't working with a Christian grave. But because of where I live and where the environment I find myself in, these are the things that the dead are drawn to communicate through, like channels that are created while the dead are living, and little attachments that their spirits and ghosts, and to a lesser extent, soul, because the soul moves on, even the soul, to where there are certain things that get attached to them, uh, certain identif identification markers. Of course, I'm being very, I'm speaking in a way that the dead don't necessarily communicate with, but I'm trying to explain it to you in a way that we can understand together. So based on what, is, what, a, what a person has been through during their life, whether it be a war or some kind of historical event, what year they were born, what year they died, um, and their name, and the, um, the culture behind the name, there's a lot of ways to connect with an individual grave. And just reading the grave, um, reading the time they were born, when they died, and their name, that can give you a lot of, a lot of kind of inlays to start imagining the time period, if not the person, because you might not know anybody in a graveyard, if not the person, then at least the, the time period and the various historical event, events that happened in that time period. To seep back into where these various parts of ourselves need to go, um, you know, the spirits being tied to, to Earth's life force needs to go back into the Earth, be disidentified with the body and the person, allow that, th allow that to be resolved, respected, then resolved and to seep back into the earth. The ghost, the, um, the ego, the sub, the, um, the true identity, the, the identity, identity force of that person to seep back into the grander subconscious of humanity. And um, you can even, you can also communicate with soul, the soul of that person that, you know, it can't be tied down to a, to a graveyard per se, but it, it will go to its various afterlife for a time and then be reincarnated. Um, there's various belief systems among grave workers. This is the one, this is my working belief system and evolving belief system as it exists based on what I found, based on the energies I've communicated with and, um, and aided in, a, in their process of reunification in a number of different ways and facets. Um, a lot of the time there's established traditions among grave workers of certain rituals and those rituals themselves have power and those are sources of power that are kind of connected to the the other larger sources of power that we tap in, into with specific prayers or different traditions and different uh, spiritual paths or religious paths, what have you. Um, it's just it's important to kind of know the the background of what you're doing when you're working in a graveyard and exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, like what you're physically doing, but what you're doing with energy, the communication flow and how things are resolved and the purpose that you, you are working in a graveyard to achieve or, or to aid or to help, something like that. And sometimes it takes a long time for you to really be able to tap into these energies. Sometimes you just need to walk around graveyards a bunch, really get your hands into the dirt, not digging up necessarily, but just to get your hands in contact with the soil. Your feet as well, you can get your, your, the soles of your feet in contact with the soil. And you start to, eventually you start to get a sense of that vibration of a particular graveyard and also the energy of the dead in that graveyard. And if you're working with a particular grave, uh, contact with the gravestone itself and their dirt around it if you're working with a particular individual that's in the graveyard um, and as much contact at various times a day is good um, you know we're talking about the soles of our feet and the palms of our hands contact with various objects like gravestone or the dirt or even fences and especially trees and graveyards because trees kind of are reservoirs that draw up that energy um, at various times a day to see the difference of energy just Really ex exploring graveyards uh, is a great way to start. Try to get a feel for everything. Don't expect too much at once. Don't expect to get uh, great results from a Ouija board or even your dousing rods in a graveyard when you first go or when you first start diving into this kind of uh, spiritual practice or, or magical path. It just takes a lot of trial and error and it takes a lot of uh, self-discovery and uh, discovery of the various kinds of vibration and energy that exists in graveyards. At any rate, I hope this has been interesting. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them down in the comment section below on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you. Hit that like button if you want to support this, uh, this channel and this video. At any rate, thank you very much for watching and hope all of you have a wonderful day. To the Alford family, I offer this 
incense of myrrh. May you find rest, and may you be provided with peace through this offering. That you all may recognize me, I cover myself with the scent of death. May your sins be washed away with water from the River Jordan. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I anoint this cross in your names and bless you with its sign.